Hey everyone! In this video, we will be presenting to you the graphs and the mapping on Coastal Resource Management Assessment. So, hi! I'm Christian B. Enriquez and I'm going to discuss the importance and a quick introduction about mapping. So, why is mapping important? Maps are one of the most critical tools used in CRM project planning and implementation. It would be impossible to grasp the multiple aspects involved in planning without maps. Mapping is important because dito natin malalaman yung condition ng different habitats and zones and ma-identify natin yung mga problems and issues uh, in those specific area of the coastal of the coastal area. Participatory mapping helps to point out spatial details and new information on features whose condition, conditions vary over space or whose locations vary over time. So this means that mapping can give us new information about our coastal area and resources and with that, magagamit natin sila para mag-provide ng visual media saan mas maraming makakaintindi even though our verbal communication is cons constrained by difference in language, background, education, and worldview. So, dahil yung maps na nagawa natin is visual representation, mas ma uh, madaling maintindihan ito ng mga uh, tao kesa naman i-explain natin verbally kung anong nangyayari dito. So, with the maps na ginawa natin, mas uh, mapa mapapadali yung pag-relay natin ng information sa kanila. So, maps are also useful when they can be compared to maps of other areas and to maps of different skills. So, we all know that we have different um, kinds of coastal areas uh, in terms of sizes and also uh, uh, in terms of species and habitat. So, it, uh, mapping can be useful para malaman natin kung ano-ano yung mga areas and ano-ano yung uh, habitats and species na nandun sa coastal areas. So, this is also important so that we can compare uh, the different coasts and the resources for management planning. So, one format that has been used successfully divide the element to be mapped into five basic categories. So, as you can see, you can see there habitats, resources, uses, issues, and other features. So lastly, PCR mapping can be divided into three basic types. Sketch mapping, drawing over maps, over base maps, and field mapping. These three basic types will be uh, reported by my co-reporters in the next slide. Sketch maps are freehand drawings that tell a lot about both the coastal locations shown on the maps and the people who make them. They can be especially beneficial in the early stages of PCRA. Because these maps begin with a blank sheet of paper, they give the least biased picture of how fishermen perceive their surroundings. In other words, they provide a peek at the fisher's mental maps of the coastal environment. Fishers frequently find it simplest to sketch the aspects of the coastal region that are most recognizable to them first, such as the road of, from their house to the market or their fishing grounds. Distinct physical features such as base, such as base, river mouths, and islands are also excellent places to begin. When asked to draw these elements, fishermen usually start with a shoreline and then include other features such as reefs, mangroves, rivers, roads, and communities freely or with prodding from the community worker. To minimize, to minimize the misunderstandings, refers to resources, sites, and environments in their native language. Coastlines are best painted in blank ink with various colors such as red, green, and brown, identifying reefs, mangroves, highways, and other characteristics. Sketch maps are most useful in locations or cases where base maps and aerial photos are not available and where there is a lack of knowledge or understanding of local resource users' perception on habitats and resources and resource uses. Sketch maps also offers perspective on those elements that are most important to the local communities participating in the sketch mapping exercises. Hi, 
I'm here to discuss about drawing a base map. But first, let us discuss what is a base map. So a base map is basically shows the certain elements like coastlines, roads, and villages. Uh, this is what a mapper used to orient themselves about the area and characteristics. Uh, the purpose of this is to guide uh, for accurate representation of various environmental elements such as habitats, uses, resources, issues, and conflicts. Uh, base maps are often produced by government, NG, government geologicals and navigation agencies. Namria, for example, prepares a base map in advance for a mapping activity. They are ideally placed on a tabloid size tracing paper and with a pre black lines that represents the characteristic of the area. Base map, uh, base map also has a scale that depends on the size of the area that is being mapped. For mapping of barangay coastal waters, the best map to trace have a scale of ranging into 1 to is to 5,000, uh, 2, 1 is to 50,000. For mapping of municipal level, 1 is to 30,000 and one, uh, 2, 1 is to 100,000. Uh, 100,000 is should be the probably the best skill on doing such map but on uh, the best choice of skill that allows each distinct coastal area unit to be mapped so that it can fit on a tablet size tracing paper after completing a base map it must be ready to create photocopies for the other fishes to draw over uh, it is uh, known to be the best participants are used to set such as color schemes and codes for all the features of the map. Uh, this will eliminate the confusion with regards in the area of the mapping itself because it will differentiate with the other one. Using colors differentiate the locations of reefs, rocks and resources and the relative condition of the resources habitats. It is still best if you allow the standards, uh, standardized mapping format that has numbers, letters, and symbol used to indicate locations associated with the resources, uses, and issues. That would be all for the drawing of base map. So we have here the five types of mapping elements. So these are generally accepted and understood in CRMP project areas. So the first element is general information. This may contain coastline, islands, bathymetry, terrain, and highways, which are often found on most government maps. Include basic information and designate significant features on the maps to assist local map creators in orienting themselves on the scale and specific position of additional map elements. So second is habitats. So these are usually mapped using color pencils to color code the different habitats. So it is flashed on the screen so for the what are the color codes used in PCRA maps of CRMP learning areas. So we have 12 color codes so you can just read that. So next is the third element is resources. Typically, they are mapped after the habitats. Resources are components, for example, fish, shellfish, rock, and wood that give food and other physical things to local communities. For mapping resources, an Arabic numeral code is utilized with each kind allocated a number. Arrows can be used to expand the range of resources beyond the position on the map where a number is set in a, in a huge resource regions. So, Fourth element is uses, livelihood, and opportunities. Places, for example, fishing gear areas, gleaning areas, mining areas, mangrove, cutting, holy sites, shore protection, and parks, where activities are carried out or, or functions give potential benefits to communities are included. It is recommended to utilize a color coding scheme with each form of usage, assigned a different letter. However, Keep in mind that some letters might be misinterpreted with numerals and should not be utilized. For example, I for 
number one and O for zero. So lastly, last element is the problems, issues, and conflicts. So these are the final to be mapped since they follow logically. Because they are the most abstract of the mapping components, they are used to map resources and purposes. The purposes. So next is the issues may be represented by the capital capital letters I S followed by a number. So next is it is flashed in the screen the example of a finished map. So this is a completed map for one barangay from PCRA in San Vicente, Palawan, which has been digitized in a computer program using symbols for resources, uses, and issues. So, this is the map of Barangay New Villafreya, San Vicente, Palawan. So, mapping is best done in group setting. Peer pressure and group consultation result in greater terminolo terminology, rather, comprehension, and more accurate placing of map elements. So, that's all. Thank you. The following table shows the list of different common coastal resources and their suggested numerical codes that can be seen in the area. Birds, mammals, and reptiles such as dugong, seabirds, and sea turtles. Fish such as clownfish, butterflyfish, angelfish, blennies, goatfish, gubbies, pufferfish, snappers, snake eels, and tuna and many more. Shells like abalones and coral snails and it, it also includes other invertebrates and plants like seaweeds and mangroves. It also shows the traditional way of legal fishing such as bag nets and cover nets and also includes the illegal fishing that can destroy our marine resources like explosives and electrofishing. Other activities include fish pens, fish cage, and mangrove plantations. Also, there are common issues that also need attentions, is attentions, issues like abandoned and unproductive fish ponds, breakage of corals, and loss of endangered, endangered species. Sadly, if this continue, we may lose our precious resources and live with nothing. Making maps or posters on signboard, it is frequently used for planning, education, and other purposes. On a signboard po or poster, a large map of, mag map of management region is useful. Habitat signboard, map list of all times of habitats, and assign each one of a color code. After the fish fishers have done drawing, over the tabloid size foundation maps, they are frequently generated in a group setting. The practice is similar to drawing over base maps, only the base map is much larger and is usually prepared differently. Hello everyone, let's proceed to the subtopic of mapping. Refining maps drawn by fishers. Once local fishers and other coastal resource users have completely drawn all the various features on the base maps, all of the details from existing printed information sources such as Namria maps can be shown to participants and compared to the maps the fishers have just drawn. Since most fishers are, are quite good mappers, comparing their maps to the Namria maps is usually a positive experience as they see the strong similarity between their maps and the maps produced by experts. While the similarity is often striking, much can be gained from examining the differences between the local and expert maps. As with all PCRA results, look for new or different information on spatial details such as small patches of mangrove, details on features that vary over space such as old growth versus pre previously logged mangrove, and features that vary over time such as locations of seasonal fish aggreg aggregations. Expert maps can help with producing exact scales, overall distributions, and consistent locations, while the locally drawn maps can add critical details and logically significant and relevant features that can make them useful for CRM planning purposes. Proceeding to the next subtopic of mapping, field map verification and ground routine. 
This method is useful with individuals or small groups after at least some drawing over base maps has been accomplished. The basic idea is to move around in the management area either on foot or in vehicles such as boats, jeeps, and etc. to verify for the refined various maps that have resulted from earlier exercises. For example, the aerial distribution of quality quality of coastal habitats such as mangroves and coral reefs can be verified and or modified by comparing maps to field survey results. Useful mapping can be accomplished with the use of global positioning system or GPS technology, which allow one to know relatively accurately one's geographical location or coordinates. The use of relatively simple and cheap handheld GPS units is encouraged. Even without the benefits of GPS technology, a great deal of useful information can be generated by field checking or ground routing maps prepared by fishers and professional cartographers. Diagramming Diagrams are another way of representing spatial information using the different sets of dimensions from the views and maps. Seasonal and trends diagrams rely on sketching resources in the dimension of time. Transect diagram can be illustrated using a two-dimensional graph, the horizontal and the vertical line. In CRM, diagrams such as calendar and history trends are essential for the effective environmental assessment. Drawing calendar diagrams. Calendar diagrams depict changes in certain variables over an annual cycle or over time. They are useful in visualizing the weather pattern and understanding how resource use activities change through the yearly cycle or through time. For example, the highest fish production can be determined using a calendar. People, record, people records which month is the peak season for the fishes based on the illustration on the screen it is from December to January. Documenting historical trends. In PCRA work, possibilities for potential productive uses are usefully revealed in a discussion of the past practices and productivity. Since alam naman natin na noon pa man ay talamak na ang overfishing sa bansa, nagbubunga ito ng pagbaba ng level ng produksyon ng isda. Therefore, the only real indication of maximum possible economic yield comes from the past experience when overfishing is not yet a problem. By understanding the ways habitats have changed over time, one can better understand the present condition of coastal habitats. Take note that by understanding the past, one can glimpse the future. To document the past, all you need is a knowledgeable local who is willing to talk about both the past and the newer occurrences. Ask the local stakeholder not just what happened but why do they think it happened that way. These typically reveal the present restrictions such as the population growth causing overfishing or fast agricultural land removal causing siltation. The result of documenting historical trends usually serve as key starting point for the identification and discussion of the problems and opportunities for CRM during the production of the coastal area profile. Guys, remember, we can learn from the past. Never forget and don't repeat the things that can potentially ruin us. So what are the importance of women in PCRA? We all know that most fishers who go to sea are men, but women play a valuable role in gathering useful information for community-based CRM. One factor is because they make up half of the population and are often highly involved in coastal resource use as reef gleaners, fry gatherers, and other shore-based harvesting practices. The women are usually excellent sources of knowledge for social and economic assessment. Since they typically play a prominent role as fish buyers and vendors, of course, and as financiers of fishing businesses. So, sa paggather ng social and economic assessment, uh, women or 
sila din yung maasahan dahil sila ang usually yung nakikita na bumibili at nagtitinda din ng mga different resources farm from the coastal area. So, it means that alam nila kung ano ang kalakaran dito. So, often, women are the best source of information regarding the economic feasibility of various fishing methods, market conditions for various coastal resources, and other aspects of the local economy. So, with these factors and importance of women, uh, in doing PCRA assessment, they are highly encouraged to participate to the maximum extent possible. However, not to force local consult consultants into socially uncomfortable situations. So, although they are highly encouraged, the assessors also need to be careful and respect the decision of the respondents. Because at the end of the day, it is, it is their decision if they want to participate or not. So, in many communities, there uh, will be little problem with women and men participating simultaneously in group exercises. But there are, there are places that uh, must okay na separate, uh, there are separate sessions for men and separate sessions for women. Para mas mag yung iba, uh, maka-open up sila sa different situations and at the same time, panatag silang panatag yung loob nila na magsalita. So, if this occurs or if segregation must be done, uh, the, assessors, the assessors must take measures to ensure that it does not diminish the equality and the usefulness of the information produced by the female participants. So, that's all for the role of women in PCRA. When gathering information, pay great attention to the person and the property rights and know when to stop asking questions to that begin to infringe on what a local consultant considers a private affairs. Locations of particularly profitable fishing sites, for example, may be regarded as trade secrets by fishermen who rely on them for a living. Sensitivity to a different cultures is valuable, a valuable advantage in PCRA. Keep an Keep an eye out for vocal and nonverbal indicators that suggest the person's discomfort with the questioning. Ensure that the local stakeholders understand exactly what the PCRA process entails. Do not set expectations that may or may not be met. If it is not clear that future financing will be available, for example, ensure that the community is made aware of this reality. Be realistic about the potential of PCRA to lead the further management efforts. Strive to avoid misunderstandings regarding the future that can lead to disappointment. Disappointment can make committees, committees skept skeptical if not outright critical of future management efforts. Finally, beware of being used by certain community members to achieve selfish political and economic, economic objectives. Careful research and the use of neutral informants are necessary to minimize the presence and influence of individuals. Local politicians, commercial fishers, and land developers who have, who have vested interests that might not be compatible with the collective good of the community.